In the pilot episode of Mr. Robot, our main protagonist, Elliot, gains the personal information needed to hack his therapist's boyfriend, Michael Hansen, by pretending to be part of the security and fraud department of the bank Hansen uses. First, before I can answer any questions, I need to verify some information. And Hansen, believing the caller is who he says he is, gives it all up. For a baseball team. Yankees. That's name. A flipper. So, now you're probably thinking either one of two things. Either, this is a plot contrivance, surely it's not that easy, I would never fall for this, or, oh my god, is it that easy, could I have fallen victim to this, was that guy who wanted my social security number actually from my credit card company, what happened, how did Elliot do that? Pretext is defined as a practice of presenting oneself as someone else, often to obtain personal information. In layman's terms, pretending to be someone else. Like most social engineering attacks, pretexting is heavily based on trust. Specifically, trusting that the person you're communicating with is who they claim to be, and that they do not have any ulterior motives. The defining example of pretexting is what Elliot's doing pretending to be from a company or service that the target uses, perhaps your HR, another department, the web devs you were thinking about hiring, or the bank you use to trick you into divulging information only the person whose identity they are masquerading as would be privy to. So, just be careful of who you give your personal information out to, right? Easy enough. Not quite. It's not just about telling someone your info, you could be exposing it in other ways. In fact, Elliot manages to find out the bank that Hansen uses, as well as his phone number, through pretexting, when Elliot goes to the building Hansen lives in, and... Can I borrow your phone? Mine's dead. I need to call my mom. And how did Elliot manage to get Hansen's address? That's right, pretexting again. That's it. Uh, hi, I just left my keys in one of your cabs. 56Y2. 306 Hawthorne. Thank you. So it's not even about your own personal information either. It could be someone else's an attacker is after. With an entire subplot of an episode of just pretexting, you might think it's the biggest social engineering threat. Not so. In fact, Verizon's data breach investigations report has shown that pretexting actually comes second in most effective social engineering campaign. The most effective? Phishing. In fact, Though phishing comes in fifth in being involved in general security incidents, when it comes to data breaches, it ranks number one. In fact, 91% of data breaches involve phishing. What is phishing? Well, phishing is kind of like pretexting, where the attacker impersonates another entity, be it person or a company, to convince their victims to do something. That something is often put in their credentials, download a file, whatever. Except phishing and their variants are often done over the internet. You can say that pretexting is the IRL phishing. Instead of having the victim interact with the attacker directly, fishers or fishermen often create counterfeit versions of websites and emails in order to fool their victims into thinking they are on the trusted site or reading a trusted email. The other main difference between phishing and pretexting is the way they manipulate the victim into complying. Pretexting often uses merely trust, but phishing just gets their foot in the door using trust but relies more on urgency to succeed. What does that mean? What is urgency? How does urgency factor in more than trust? Simple. It does not allow the users to think out of fear of missing out or fear some consequence that has a timer attached. Your Facebook account has been suspended, and if you don't log in and respond with an X amount of time, it'll be deleted. You only have an hour to redeem this offer. If one was invested in their Facebook account or the offer presented, then the fear of those repercussions of missing out or 
their account being deleted might supersede this person's caution because it'll trigger that emergency response that they got to act quick to fix it instead of, hey, wait, this makes no sense. I was literally just on my Facebook and they don't do time deletes. Phishing, pretexting, and other social engineering attacks are often not the end game plan of a malicious actor, but it often provides information necessary or creates a backdoor to proceed with the attacker's plan, such as providing credentials of an employee with relevant privileges or confidential information for the former, or installing some malicious software from an infected file for the latter. Attackers can be very sneaky, and it's a lot harder to recognize fake emails these days. In fact, they go so far that sometimes they use alternative alphabets, like Cyrillic letters, to register a domain that looks 100% identical, but are only different in Unicode. Can you tell the difference between the Cyrillic Y and the Latin E? Both of those letters are actually Y. I didn't feel like finding another picture just for Latin E when they looked identical. But I got you. I tricked you good. And now you see how easy an attacker could too. So with all this in mind, it sounds like we shouldn't trust anyone we don't 100% know we know. How can we trust the email from Aunt Sally isn't spooth and it isn't just some bad guy pretending to be my aunt? Are those emails really from my bank? How can we trust any call from any company if they could literally be anyone? And with the last two examples from Mr. Robot, mostly the former of the two... Can I borrow your phone? Mine's dead. I need to call my mom. We also see how our own willingness to help each other can be turned against us. Hanson lets Elliot use his phone, which leads to him getting both Hanson's phone number and the bank Hanson uses, which leads to Elliot being able to crack Hanson's passwords. Should we just never trust anyone? Well, no. Hanson could have tried to help the person he thought needed to call his mom, but in a safer way. A smarter way. Here's how the characters in the show could have thwarted Elliot's shenanigans. Hanson could have insisted on dialing the number himself and not let Elliot touch his phone. During his call with his supposed bank security and fraud division, Hanson could have pushed asking the caller to identify himself harder and refused to answer questions until he was satisfied that it was actually the bank calling. Or he could have told them, Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'll call you back as right now is not very convenient for me and then call his bank to verify whether it was actually them calling or not. The taxi company could have called the driver to check whether the lost item was in the cab. Here are some techniques to avoid phishing, pretexting, and other similar attacks that are less tailored to a specific situation. Remember, most of the time you contact them first. They don't initiate contact. If they call you, tell them it's a bad time and call the company back at a trusted company number. They want you to think it's urgent so you don't think straight. So take your time and think it through. Don't click links and emails and don't open any attachments unless you know 100% who it's from. Most links and emails, you can usually find a way to navigate to it on your own. Use multi-factor authentication. So even if you did accidentally give out your login credentials, they can't log in without your phone or whatever multi-factor authentication device you use. If you manage a company or local business, train your employees in the above points. Also train employees to report suspicious emails, calls, and persons so that the security team can better secure against attacks. Most importantly, regardless of whether you're responsible for a company or only for yourself, maintain good security practices in general. Security should be like an onion, with many layers of defense. Have a system to mitigate damage should anyone slip up. A good firewall can keep out malware inadvertently downloaded, and keeping up to date with software can make it harder to find an exploit. Operate on the principle of least privilege. Things should only be given privileges needed to complete the task, i.e., don't run everything as administrator, so that if one point is compromised, the entire system is not.
Don't forget about backup so you don't lose data, and encryption so data is harder to exfiltrate. Maybe activity logs so you can find out when and how a breach happened. Try and have as many layers as you can to protect yourself. 91% of data breaches begin with a phishing email that can gain information used for an attack or just information that the bad guy wants. It's not just emails to watch out for, nor your own information. And it's impossible to 100% prevent an incident, as social engineering exploits psychology, which is one system we can't patch. But the best defense is to stay cautious and to make sure to have a plan in case a spy manages to slip past, unlike these guys. Right behind you. <laughs>